to look at the prints compared with what is actually written. This is not a new idea. Um, so we want to look at the artwork. Here is the little boy found. Look at how beautiful this is. There's an angel here. Now he's going to be doing these plates backwards because when you do the plate, everything is backwards when you run, the, run it through the press. So he's writing backwards and he's designing these backwards. Look at how wonderful this is, how this is a child. This is a boy's costume. Back in those years, children got to a point where they were breached. And that meant the little boys finally got their pants. <laughs> but when they were tiny children, they wore dresses. And so you'll see this is about a little boy, but that, in our mind, does not look like a little boy. But it was, of the era. So, kind of fun to see that. It was wonderful to see it in the real. So he thought children were innocent, so this is a soft look. There you have someone leading the child, and it looks so nice. Now, here we are with the experience. The same thing going on here. The angels are just standing looking. They don't seem to care. And look at the way this goes. How about the child in the darkness that's behind? And the leading out? Quite a bit different. There is no covering there on the child. Very interesting to look at those and the way he came up. This is a romantic idea before romantic ideas were out there. The lamb. Remember reading how it was? And here's the vine. And Christian motif in the vine. And the lamb. And look at the lamb. The way it's shaped in the child. Almost the shepherd idea there, but it's a child and innocent. And the other lambs over there. How did they get those in? The um, wife and he would paint them after they ran through the press. So they actually used paints on them um, to paint them, and they were individually done. Some of the prints are very unique. So you'll have the same idea, like in the rose, and some are very intense and some are less intense. So the plates are very valuable because they're unique, each one that was done. Yes? So the, these are uh, printing plates. Yes, these are actually the um, parts of the book. So this is the vellum or the page in the book um, that has run through the press. The press, when you see a plate, you can see the image on it in reverse. And I've done quite a few etchings and quite a few lithographs. But the plate won't have color on it. And it's in reverse like a negative of a film. So it's kind of interesting to look at those things. They're, they're pretty neat. What was the typical printing? How many? Um, well, at this time, there, he did not do that many, actually. Um, and the, a press, actually, um, a plate wears out. The more you run it through a press, the more the quality of the plate gets, um, gets uh, squashed down. So um, a plate will last a long time, but eventually you will stop using the plate because of the quality eventually that will happen to it. So um, some plates, 250, some of them 25, depending on the plate itself and how they go. So th there's quite a few of the plates. The tiger. Look at the tiger now. 
the tree and the stanzas here where it's divided. How about this tiger? It's, its eye is just looking at you. But I'm not afraid of that tiger. That's more like a little kitty cat or a stuffed toy. <laughs> so what was Blake saying in the intertextuality? He's going there, back and forth. He's telling us one thing, and even the way it's looking is almost the way the lamb was. The legs are out almost the same. The head is out almost the same. Could it be the same maker? Is that what he was suggesting? Or is it that this is a little animal? So you have to think on what he was doing there with the plates because he really did think it through. It wasn't by accident that he made them like this. And he really had some neat ideas um, as he worked through these plates. Was he the trendsetter for the, the, the pictures with the poems, or was he was this a common thing in his time? It wasn't common uh, for the time. This thing that he did was um, very different, but what would happen is um, not many people knew him. He was not well known in his day. He was not taken as a, the great artist that he was, the great poet that he was in his day. Around the time of Keats and those guys, Blake and Keats and those guys are romantics, but Keats was not a Blake's day. Blake preceded him by about 50 years in the time frame. He was well ahead of his time in thought. And uh, when they found his work, Rossetti, they were so amazed, and when they put it out, that was the age of the romantics that came out and saw what Blake was up to. And uh, well, very interesting. You know, the, the, um, the, other, the first pictures are very photographic. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I've got to say, I'm not too impressed with that little tiger. Sorry. Yes. And all yes. that. <laughs> so, what? I mean, what's he doing? Well, um, I think he's really telling us the idea of, there's, there's an illustration here going on. Art is not necessarily a photograph of the day that's going on out there. You don't have to do a pose in art. There are ideas out there. And you saw where everybody was posed, and they would hold their hat like they were greeting you and taking their hat off. And uh, they would look at you, and their boots would be kind of pointing in a certain way. And behind them would be the clouds and the majestic mountains and something going on, and a powerful statement. Well, there was powerful statements here, but the art really worked in, in the idea with the poetry. So there was more going on intertextually than there was necessarily as, as a pose in the art. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>